the show tonight. Uh, did you like it? Yeah! So, um, both Tarnation and Not Me Murphy seem to be linked by the uh, trying to love a person who is emotionally special and getting into the head of that. So at first, and, but we, and we also talk about your shorts, but first I want to know where did this character, because you're not like that. Yeah. Um, not a little bit like that. <laughs> uh, anybody who's seen me cook in the walk uh, knows that I'm kind of like that. Um, uh, I have many people in my life who won't uh, do string beans for me because it reminds me of the movie. Um, but you know, uh, it, it came from uh, this fear in humanity that uh, somebody could switch out of nowhere into somebody else. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it was my dad that inspired it, because that would be, uh, you know, too honest. But, um, <laughs> I'll say that it's just, a, it's just a fear, you know, that we have. That, um, you, you believe somebody is something and you love them, no matter what, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they switch on you. And, uh, it's kind of terrifying, and you don't know what to do with it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where it originally came from. All right, good, good call. Now, it was a kaleidoscopic adventure with Murphy, and you wrote it, acted in it, cast it, produced it, etc. How did that process emerge? It started on the beach in Malibu. Um, it was a joke, um, but it's also true. Uh, I was just... Um, Honestly, my, my, I grew up uh, in Chatsworth, Pennsylvania. Some people here from there. I'm sure they're going to shout. And uh, my, my family had a hotel, and uh, it went bankrupt, as many things did uh, a few years back. And I knew it was about to. And I started, honestly, with the locations that I had. Uh, I, and I built a story around that. Um, and I was very interested in mental illness. Um, I was also interested in playing somebody who could be many different characters. As I said, we had 40 hours of footage, so I got to play more characters than you even saw tonight. Um, and it just kind of spawned out from, from that. I started, I started with, uh, I, I cast um, uh, Rebecca and Ronald, the two actors, because they are not only uh, incredible actors, but also um, people who care tremendously about me. And uh, when the way that uh, it, Rebecca and Ronald and Raina, who played Tanya, the mother, or orgasmic birth mother, uh, were the only trained actors in the film, everybody else were, were, were was the normal people. Um, playing themselves, uh, but we imposed fictional circumstances upon them. When we showed up to dinner at Lloyd and Christina's, I introduced Ronald as Brad, and Ronald was a Buddhist vegetarian to them. They never knew the tr truth about Ronald. They knew only knew who his character was. And uh, it was interesting to see how they dealt with that. I, they, they knew me personally, so we edited out about 300 Jasons, but uh, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of hard. Jonathan, what were those two films we saw at the top? Where did they come from? How did you get there? And how did you make them? Uh, I'd love that Eleanor to join me, actually. Eleanor, do you want to come up and talk about it a little bit also? Or, she, no, I don't even know if she's in here, because she has a whole other cool... Oh, she's Who is bar. Eleanor? Oh, I'm sorry, I may have outed her. That's April March, um, also known as AKA Eleanor Blake. Um, you know, I, I met I met Eleanor uh, through my friend Marie Lozier, who's another um, experimental filmmaker. Uh, I guess about two years ago or something, mm -hmm. and we just kind of like linked like crazy kissing cousins. And um, she <laughs> she um, yeah, she just asked me if I wanted to do a music video, and, and I said I'd love to do a music video. And then that idea had kind of evolved into other more ambitious things. It, it, like, then it became like a music video, sort of like a, a 1980s, um, uh, I haven't slept in two and a half days, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so we, uh, the, the music video evolved into this idea of making um, a short film 
uh, that was going to have like a like a like a Michael Jackson's thriller narrative intro into it, and then we kind of expanded from there, and then it was going to become like a, like a proper short film, and now it's going to be a narrative, and that video is going to be in the narrative, and uh, so it's been evolving and evolving and evolving, and we're going to start shooting it in uh, May 2015. Oh, and, and, Gla and Glacier, what was that? Uh, that was very powerful. Glacier, uh, I'm, I'm friends with John, John Grant, and um, I've known him for a little while. And um, uh, Simon Raymond, who was the who manages him uh, in on the European side, uh, <laughs> was my uh, music supervisor for uh, my last movie I made. And uh, I got a, I got an email from Simon asking me if I, I wanted to do a um, a music video for his um, for his song, and they said they wanted something that kind of you know uh, was sort of like a gay anthem of sorts. And they sent me kind of a proto version where it was just like a lot of mashed up YouTube clips where there was <clears throat> it was just sort of like random uh, YouTube clips that was just edited to music. And so I got really really inspired and wanted to do it. Um, I had to go away out of town, out of the country for a long time. Like as I said, yes, but I. Uh, you know, it's a no-budget venture. It's a thing that'll probably never see the light of day in terms of like so and clearances. But I'm so glad and so unbelievably grateful that I was able to show here sight unseen too. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much. And um, so I had asked. I put out a, a word on Facebook, and uh, I was looking for people to help me because I, I had to like sort of like figure out a scenario that was going to enable me to like get the footage. To, to like the magnitude of footage that I needed to get to sort of do this. And uh, we ended up getting like, probably like 500 hours of footage. Um, I found some extraordinary folks. I think a few of them are here tonight. Uh, I met, some of them I met from like friends of friends. Some people I, who were just sort of like strangers I met, excuse me, strangers I met on Facebook. Um, I just sort of put a word out for help that I needed um, a bunch of people to simultaneously like pull a bunch of footage for me. So. Um, and, you know, I just, I didn't, I gave everybody producer credit for it because they, they essentially produced the footage um, that allowed me and a couple of other people to sort of put this together really quickly. And I ended up digitizing like 125 of my DVDs <laughs> and um, digitizing and pro resing like all this YouTube footage and, you know, just copious amounts of, of footage. And I got such an extraordinary amount of footage from it that I, I think I want to do something a little more ambitious uh, and a little more opulent than this. That would kind of be maybe in the world of like a feature film that would never see the light of day either, but it would be something cool to do, I think. That'll be for 2018. <laughs> yeah, for 2018. Now, now, how do you two know each other? That's a, I don't, I sort of remember you okay, amazing into my life, but I don't remember yeah, like the whole I, I remember beginning and end. Or, yeah. Not there was no end, but the beginning. I was on, um, I went to LA where I was writing this outline in 2010, uh, just visiting some friends, and um, uh, Coette had just made All Flowers in Time, starring Chloe Sivigny, and uh, another young actor, what was his name? So uh, Chandler Friends, yeah, who's like last, 20 uh, now. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's like, like, he was in the uh, last Wes Anderson film. Yeah. Um, and Stephen had produced it, but he would, had to move on to something else, and uh, they needed to do a lot of SAG paperwork and you know and no, something nobody wants to do. So I was I didn't have a car in LA, which uh, I don't recommend. Um, and I was trying to get to Torrance to buy some pot, and um, which was impossible. I had to take five different buses. It took all day. Stephen Winter called me. I just remember sitting on this bus and Stephen Winter calling me, and I was like putting my uh, you know fingers in my ears to be able to hear him, and he was explaining what I had to do uh, to to become the associate producer on this this short that Jonathan was just finishing. It premiered at New York Film Festival. Jonathan asked me to come on and be uh, his, his everyday producer for a year for or so change. for uh, Long the Long Time Nation, and uh, we just became close friends and uh, almost like family over that. Uh, so uh, it was incredibly thrilling, inspiring, and just perfect to have his shorts show. Definitely a bonding experience on many levels. 
Are you proud, Jonathan? I'm very proud. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm extraordinarily excited. Are there questions from the audience? Never is the first. Yeah, right here. Never is the first. Yes, please. Um, Jason, as an actor, was it like a very cathartic experience to play like somebody who could be anybody and also like nobody at the same time? <laughs> um, yeah, I remember preparing to feel shitty for a few weeks. Um, I was trying to feel nothing. Um, if that's possible, I was, I was start. I started there, and uh, it was what the strangest experience was because the way we shot this is uh, I had a very strict one take rule. Uh, we shot it on su two super VHS cameras. Uh, super VHS is just a better version of VHS, and these old Panasonic reporter cameras, this big, and they had sound zoom, and is this this format that, that never actually you've never heard of because uh, it became popular for a second and reporters used them and then, you know, uh, digital came out. So, but we, we, I, I thought it was pretty cool, so we shot on that. And um, I had decided that we were just going to do one take and the strangest thing was to be the director and the actor uh, when we would be, you know, I'd be having simulating sex or, or whatever and be in the moment and then have to call a cut at some point. Um, it, be like, yeah, it, was very, it was very strange to be in these places of being very vicious or very vulnerable or, or very empty and then have to be like, God. <laughs> um, but, and, and sometimes I actually had to call a cut because I had the boom operator hitting me in the head uh, with a microphone because we had been shooting for two hours. And, uh, I hadn't called cut yet. <laughs> you gotta get in one take. It's a high stakes situation. The actors fucking bring it when you put them under a gun like that. So, just saying. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, next question. Yes. Uh, a question to uh, first about Murph. It's an absolutely beautiful film to watch. I haven't figured out how I feel about the narrative, but I certainly can tell you my heart was so excited by the beauty of the film, so thank you. And to Jonathan, um, you make very intimate films and then you have this scopey tone kind of <clears throat> spectacle, which is a, that there's a sort of a tension between your own aesthetic and that kind of grand aesthetic. And when you, in Glacier, you're so clean. I mean, it's so clean, it's, it's just so clean, which is not a word I would normally use for your kind of work. So. The, as a filmmaker, aesthetically, you are, you've grown so much that you can bounce from these two places and talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love experimenting with different genres and style. I, my, I, I first and foremost kind of come from the place of being very down and dirty, and, and that was, those were like my first, that was my first film, really, and I, and I sort of teetered away from it for a little bit just to try to see what the possibilities were to kind of like be able to correlate the way my mind operates and the way the way I see film as a as a texture and the, you know and try to like kind of like um, channel that into other places and I and I always felt post tarnation that <clears throat> I was occasionally with a few projects trying to sort of you know fit myself into a format or a world or a, a sort of like uh, larger sort of more collaborative scenario that I didn't always, you know, not to say that I, you know, I'd love to collaborate, obviously, but there were just certain, there were certain projects that were just sort of like, I just felt a little uh, off kilter at, at some points. And then also, um, yeah, I mean, I just sort of like kind of got away from it. But now, you know, the, my original aesthetic, but now I, I feel like I'm sort of reverting back and sort of making full circle in a kind of natural way. Even, I mean, it's taken 10 years to kind of like, you know, get, get my grounding with it and sort of pause for a little while and just kind of realize that it's probably a good idea to just maybe go back again. But, but you're right, I mean, it is, this is a little bit cleaner, but, um, I still feel like it's kind of like, I feel like it's more me than anything I've done in a long time. That wasn't a negative. <laughs> Next question. So 
How are we doing? How are we doing? Well, you know, we're actually, uh, we're actually, we're actually running out of time to... I have to say a quick thank you. Please do. So, um, because uh, the, the biggest uh, misconcept about film, uh, especially when we call it independent film, is that uh, it's independent, it's the furthest from independent. Coette knows that, Winter knows that, everybody here who's made a film knows that. Uh, Bryn Jackson, who's here, Maria Celeste Garahan, who's here, Ross Bernetti, who's here, Mario Mostoff, who's here, um, fucking everybody who's here that helped me and everybody that's not. Uh, I am Bryn and Marie uh, spent just hours and hours and hours, and just the data mosh, which is the uh, uh, segment in the backyard with my character and, and the uh, mother-in-law character, uh, which, by the way, looks so good in HD. Um, it, it, uh, Bryn spent three months, literally three months, doing that scene. Um, uh, so thank you very much. It's, it's not going to be Congratulations, guys. All of you are available and loud. Oh, yeah. You just chat with people casually. They love feedback. So come up to them.